I was trying to figure out how to introduce Josh Young today. I was going to say, do I introduce him as a World Series champion? Do I introduce him as one of the best young players in baseball? Do I introduce him as one of the best players in baseball? Do I introduce him as the top vote getter in the American League for third base for the All-Star game? Do I introduce him as a first-round draft pick? The answer is it's all of the above. It is Josh Young, the third baseman from the World Series champion, Texas Rangers. Once again, Josh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, so here we go. Um, first things first, Josh, congratulations on the World Series championship. That is amazing. Thanks. Yeah. Um, what are you doing like right now? As we talk to you, it is November 16th. You're, you know, not that many days removed from celebrating the championship. Before we get into all of that, just like what, what, what are you up to like right now? Are you like already deep in training for next year? Are you sort of trying to relax, get a little bit of time off? Like what's going on in your world? Like right now, as we talk. Kind of both, um, kind of both. I'm back home. Um, got back in the weight room, you know, I broke my thumb there and I think like August 6th or something. And, um, I pretty much stopped lifting weights for the rest of the year. Just let my body recover that whole time. And then at that time, the season was almost over. It was playoff run. Just try to stay as fresh as possible. Ready be ready at seven o'clock to play those games. Um, so I just started getting in the weight room this week. Um, but other than that, it is literally just rest, hang out. Uh, I love to play Fortnite. That's my game with my brother and all our buddies. So, um, that's pretty much all I'm doing right now. So I asked you right before we started the stream, but I'll, I'll ask you, uh, you know, in front of all of the viewers, who's the best Fortnite player, you or your brother? <laughs> um, it depends on the day. Sometimes he beats me, sometimes not. But I'm always going to try to take uh, take the crown in that uh, and reign, um, reign over this household a little bit. I mean, those of us who have older siblings – we know the deal, right? The older brother is always going to be the champion until absolutely taken out. Like it's just, that's just sort of how it goes. So I have a feeling that's probably how it goes around the, the young household as well. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So, so many things I want to ask you about. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm going to go in reverse chronological order, if that's okay with you, uh, because you've had, You've had a, an incredible, what you've accomplished just in 2023, I think is probably in the top 5% of all the major leaguers who've ever played baseball, right? You won a world series, you went to an all-star game, you know, as a, as a starter, so many things to talk about, but I want to, I want to start at the very start of the 2023 postseason. So the Texas Rangers who were a really good team all year long, you had, you know, a, a, a lot of, you know, a lot of really great streaks. You had a couple of, of, of dips in that, but you, you are at the very start of the 2023 postseason. you are heading to Tampa Bay um, as a wild card to take on the Tampa Bay Rays. You had um, been in the major leagues. You, you came up in September of 2022 what was the mood of the team and what was your mood heading into that first game of the playoffs against, against Tampa Bay? Well, the mood wasn't great. Um, you know, we, we lost one nothing on the last day of the season. We lost the, uh, the AOS title on the last day to Houston. Um, that, that stung. That really hurt. Um, but just to run back, those last 10 games, me and Adolis were able to finally get back in the lineup against um, Boston the week before. I think we both got nine or 10 games under our belt before the postseason. So we were trying to find our stride back in the lineup those last 10 games. And there were some ups and downs for sure. Um, we went into Seattle and lost three out of four to end the regular season. Um, it hurt. Everyone kind of felt that. But then there was kind of a switch in us because that series in Seattle, it was like everyone was trying to be the hero in every at bat. And um, you can kind of, you could kind of feel it. Um, we always say our butts were a little tight. Um, you know, we were trying to do too much at the plate uh, defensively. Our pitching staff did a pretty good job keeping us in those games. We just couldn't break through offensively at all. And Seattle's got a really good staff, so it's hats off to those guys for pitching us really well. 
at the same time, we just weren't executing offensively. Um, so when all of that was over, we kind of all got to take a deep breath. Um, the record's going to reset now in the postseason. We're flying across country to Tampa. Yeah, Seattle to and Tampa. There's not much. I don't. That might be the longest possible flight in the continental United States. Uh, yeah, it might be one of the one of the longest. Um, so we had a long flight there, and it was just rally mode, pretty much. I mean, all kind of came together and said, "Let's just pass the baton. Let's not try to play hero ball. Let's not try to do too much. Let's just have." one good at bat after one another good at bat and just kind of stack those up and see what happens and if we win we win if we lose we lose and um ended up working out for us there now at the time were you more ticked off that you didn't have that division title were you more ticked off that you were now a road team with no chance of playing a home game in that first series were you more ticked off that you didn't get a four or five day break. Um, was it all of the above? Was it not really any of that? I'm, I'm, I'm sort of curious what, what you're, you were thinking right then. It was more just disappointment. Like we were just disappointed in ourselves for our performance um, in Seattle. And that's all it truly was. Um, Cause at the end of the day, once it happens, you can't do anything about it. So we didn't, we didn't lull on it too much, but I, there was definitely a sense of disappointment that we weren't able to get the job done there. Now, in the wild card series, this is your first postseason as a major league ball player. You had come up in 2022 for a team that lost 94 games, so did not get to the postseason in 22. Now here you are in 2023. It's your first postseason. It's against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is a really good team. The crowds were kind of small. You Again, you sort of you know, said there was a bit of a disappointment in the air. Before we talk about that actual series, though, like, what were you, did you sense, you know, when you first got on the field in that first wild card game, this postseason was different? Did it feel different? Did it feel bigger? Did it feel weird because the, there was a, a small crowd? Like, that had to be a kind of a strange moment running on the field for your first MLB postseason game in Tampa Bay. Like, did you get a sense for that or, or was it, did it feel more like just uh, uh here's another game, you know, another, another game. Let's get up. Let's go. I mean, that was pretty much the mentality we had uh, the whole postseason. It's just another series. We're not trying to make it more than it is. Um, you either do or you don't like you either survive in advance or you get knocked out and you go home. Um, so for us going to Tampa, you know, we played Tampa right off the all-star break and we had a pretty good series against them. Um, so we had a little confidence going into play against Tampa. They're a really good club. They set, you know, they started the season on that unbelievable tear. They did a lot of amazing things this year. Uh, we just kind of had that quiet confidence going into that series. And, um, I mean, the boys came together. That's kind of how we would, we would describe it. We all came together, that collective effort, the pass the, pass the baton mentality. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, just, we were just having fun. That's truly what it was. We were just having fun being together, playing the game. And I think throughout the whole postseason, um, you could see that. But, I mean, it started in Tampa. Yeah, I mean, and you started in Tampa. You got your first postseason RBI in game one. You went three for four in game two with two runs in an RBI. So it didn't take long for you to get going. You guys basically blitzed Tampa. I don't think they even – I think they still don't know what happened to them. You guys showed up. You took two straight games. You, you turn that disappointment into really effective performance on the field. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that was the whole thing. Like we, in Seattle, we just felt like, man, we, we left so much on the table that when we went to Tampa, we were like, no, let's all commit to this plan and let's just go, let's just go execute it to the best of our individual ability. And then collectively as a team, it'll take care of itself. And so now looking back that you've had time to think about it and time to analyze it, do you feel that not having more than a day off between the end of the regular season and the start of the playoffs actually worked in your favor or looking back, I know you wouldn't change anything because you won the world series, but looking back, do you still think it would have been nice to have that four or five days off between the end of the regular season and the, uh, and the start of the playoffs? You know, just kind of seeing how the playoffs all unfolded, those teams that got that time off um, just weren't as sharp. And anytime you have four or five days off, 
like you don't forget how to hit in those days, but seeing pitching again, getting back out on the field, um, you know, that it, it just takes some time sometimes. And you see it after the all-star break almost every year. The offensive numbers probably aren't great right after the all-star break. Um, but for us, we got one day off, I think. It was like a BP day. Um, you know, when, when you hit that stride early in that wild card series, you start building that momentum. Um, and then for us, going in to play a really good Baltimore team, we're coming in with momentum. They just had those five days off. You know, they probably had some inner squad stuff going in there, but it wasn't really, um, you know, big emotional things going on. And we're coming in with all this momentum. And, I mean, you, we, you kind of saw the series played out, and that's that's kind of what we were just able to do especially in that Baltimore series. Yeah. And so let's talk about that Baltimore series. So you went into Baltimore and first game was a tight one, but you know, you, you wound up basically once again, blowing the doors off of a really good Baltimore team. Again, that had that four or five days off. Did you sense, you know, you're playing third base, right? You, you have probably the best seat in the house for how their hitters are approaching, you know, the plate. Did you get a sense that they were just off because of that, 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 time frame or was it more just you guys were red hot and you're a buzzsaw and there wasn't really anything that uh, that the Orioles could do about it I mean if you look at both of our teams we were both kind of identical in the fact that not a bunch of guys on our rosters had been in the playoffs um, and I think that's where we kind of had the edge we had those two games in the playoffs in the atmosphere we were excited um um, coming in with some momentum, we kind of sensed the the quiet, the the crowd mentality on the road. You walk into Baltimore with forty six plus thousand, just screaming, booing, electric. I mean, their their fan base is awesome. Those were incredible games there um, to play in. I mean, they were in tune to the whole to the game, no matter what the score was. Um, so that was pretty cool to be a part of. But you know, we're coming in with that momentum. We're coming in with those two games of experience, and that's just enough of a leg up, uh, especially in a tight, close game one. Um, but hats off to our pitchers, our starters, um, even our bullpen. I mean, in the regular season, it didn't look great. And then we got to the postseason, they were just doing their job. And um, it worked for us. It helped us out a lot. But, yeah, I think those five days off, um, you know, it's it's just a little different because throughout the, re the whole regular season, you get that one time, and that's at the All-Star break. So you don't really know how to deal with that, you know, too much. Well, and hats off to you. You you had your first postseason home run in game one, right? That was a that was a, a one a one run game, a one run victory. So, you know, at the end of the the uh, AL division series, you've won all five games you've played. You've knocked out the Rays. You've knocked out the Orioles. You're hitting four hundred. You know, you're you've got a home run under your belt, like. Does is there is when when you hit your first postseason home run? Is it a sense of relief, like okay, I got that out of the way. I'm not thinking about it. it. Is is it not that? Like I'm I'm curious, you know what what that felt like to get that first postseason home run, especially in such a big game. I mean, yeah, it's a monkey off your back for sure. Um, to say you don't think about it, everyone kind of thinks about that kind of thing. <laughs> um, some guys are better at shielding it than others. Um, for me, it was. I mean, it just feels like a weight's taken off your shoulders. And it's not necessarily that you're going up there trying to hit home runs, but when you do get that first one, you're like, oh, you know, I can do it on the big stage, you know? And um, that's truly what it was like. Um, but yeah, close game. I think we turned some some critical double plays in there. You know, we, we were just playing probably our best baseball of the season at that point. And to be honest, you look at it as the first time our off, like the postseason run, it was the first time our offense was fully healthy and clicking um, because for most of the year, you know, we missed Corey early. Um, and then after the all-star break, you know, we just had our, our run of injuries, Jonah, Adolis, myself, um, Evaldi a little bit. So, I mean, that was the first time we were going out there full fledged um, with everybody healthy and, and committed to the plan. So then you head to the American league championship series you're from Texas. San Antonio is your is is you know your home where you went to high school and you went to college in Texas as well. You've got the Texas Rangers who have never won a World Series, have come close. You know, one of those franchises that that has a a long history but had never had a World Series. 
you're playing against the Houston Astros, the defending champions. Um, I, I mean, that your your phone must have just been blowing up all week long <laughs> heading into that series. Like that had to mean a lot to you personally to be playing for the Rangers in your home state against a Texas club. That's almost almost like the perfect storm for you, I would think, heading into that ALCS. Yeah, it was it was super cool. Um, you know, just being a homegrown player in the Rangers organization, they gave me the opportunity out of college to play professional baseball. I mean, to be in that in that moment against our rival, our division rival, um, I guess they call it like the Texas showdown or something. It was it was truly amazing to be a part of. And heading into that series, you know, we had had some moments with Houston this year where things got heated. Um, and I'm pretty sure they just smoked us at home. I think <laughs> um, probably a month before that, they had just kicked our butt. Um, they hit like 15 homers in the series and just annihilated us. And, you know, coming to that series, it was like, okay, um, to get to the World Series, you're going to have to go through the defending champs. You're going to have to go through Houston. Um, you knew that was going to happen at some point. Um, and now we got to stake our claim and it's, it's going to be hard. We're going to be on the road for four out of seven. They're a really good club. They've been there. They've done that. They've won the world series. Um, so the odds, I, I don't think we're pointing in our favor very much, but that's where, you know, we had the, the five game winning streak coming in. Let's just keep the momentum going. Um, and we've done pretty much all of it on the road. We're four and on the road at that point. And it was just like, okay, let's just go get it done. It's just another series. Don't make it more than it is. It's us versus Houston in a seven-game set. Um, let's just go have fun playing ball. And we could do a whole show just on the ALCS. It was a seven-game roller coaster. Road teams won all the games. The home hometown fans were, were, were getting upset all the time. I do want to ask you, other than obviously the moment where you won the pennant, is there a moment? Is there an at bat? Is there a defensive play that you made? Because you know a lot, a lot of folks, if they don't know, they see the name Josh Young and they think you know slugger, which you are, but you're also one of the best defensive third basemen in the league as well. Is there a moment or two that you remember uh, during that seven game roller coaster series with with the Astros that really sticks with you? I'm not even, it's not even going to be personal. It's going to be at bats of other guys. Game six. Well, I guess we can go back to game five. Game five, Adoles is homer to take the lead right before Altuve hits his homer. Um, that was special. Big moment. We're facing Verlander. We haven't really broken through. We've, we've scratched a couple tough runs. Um, but, I mean, he hits the big homer there, gives us the lead, and then Altuve does his thing. Um, so that was a big one. But I'm going to take Adoles into game six. He's getting – booed up and down every <laughs> bat. Um, and we've had a really good game. I think we're up 5-2 at this point. Base is loaded. Adults is up there. He's, he, you know, he struck out four times going into that fifth at bat. And then all of a sudden, he hits the grand slam. And that, I think that moment switched a flip. Or, yeah, sw flip the switch. Sorry, I said that backwards. I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. Um, just kind of the whole series. So that at bat, I think, was a big one just for our morale. Um, that pretty much said, hey, we're going to game seven, because I think he hit that in the top, potentially the top of the ninth. Don't quote me on that. I think it was top of the ninth. Um, and to see their fans leaving, like, as soon as he hits that homer, you start seeing their fans get up and leave. That's when you know, like, this is ours. This is our game, at least. Um, and then game seven, Seager hits the homer in the first inning off Javier, who had pretty much been – impossible to score on in his postseason career and he comes flying around the bases comes in the dugout and he starts yelling <laughs> and Seeger is not an emotional cat by any means and for him to show that emotion to all of us it was just like oh yeah here we go um and those two at bats really resonate with me and crazy thing they end up being the two guys that do it for us in game one of the world series but right. um those those two at bats, I think, were just huge and pivotal in that in those two road games after you know Houston swept us at home in those three. So, 
sidebar, I live in the New Jersey suburbs of Philadelphia, and uh, I actually was able to go to all of the Philadelphia home playoff games in the wild card series, the division series, wow. and the and the um, NLCS. And by the end of game seven of the NLCS, I was personally exhausted, right? Like these are three series in a row. And I was just like, man, it's one thing back when I first started watching baseball, right? You had the American League and the National League Championship Series and the World Series, right? At most, you're going to play, well, when I first started watching baseball, it was five games and then seven games. But now, just to get to the World Series, you're going through this gauntlet of three series in a row of of high leverage moments and, and tenseness and bats like... I know the answer is no, but when you're there for like game one of the World Series, like, are you able to put all of that behind you, or are you are you feeling like a little bit of that, like, wow, this <laughs> we're still just at game one of the World Series? Like, h- how was that? Like, did I'm curious what your sort of what your like physical shape was, you know, after you 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 win you win the American League pennant for the first time in ten years for the franchise, and it's like game one of the World Series. Is it a similar kind of a situation or like, no, I, it, it's the World Series. There's no exhaustion. Like, let's go. We're, we're ready to do it. Uh, I think to say that would just be a bold-faced lie. <laughs> um, at that point in the season, you know, 162 games is a long time, Man. let alone all the games that, you know, got us there. I think we ended up playing 180-something. And that doesn't include spring training games. Right. Like, it doesn't include all of that. So everybody's in rally mode. Um to say the least. I mean, everyone in the postseason is dealing with like someone's everyone's dealing with something right um, individually. And it's all just can we put it behind us and go out there and perform to the best of our ability? That's all it is in the postseason. Um, it's rally mode. And I think for us, you know, we just hit our stride at the right times. Um, and it led to all that. But but yeah, you're walking into game one and just being a fan of the game, which most of our team is like it's special, especially for a lot of us, our first postseason, first World Series, like you walk out and you've got 500 media people there. Like it's for one, it's so cool. It's so special. But at the same time, it's like, how do I dumb this down in my head to not make it more than it is, which, you know, you deal with the whole postseason. I think the World Series just magnifies it a little bit more that it's, hey, it's just us versus Arizona, you know, because the title of world series is everywhere and you can get, you know, stuck in that, in that mindset of, Hey, I gotta, I gotta be the best I can be. Does that mean I need to hit a homer every time? Uh, no, it doesn't. But like subconsciously our minds can easily go there. So I think um, our vets were able to tell us like, Hey, it's just another game. It's just another series. Um, do exactly what you've done all year. Don't change your routines now just because it's the world series. And uh, we all leaned on that heavily and, just try to make it, you know, one game at a time. It's cliche. It's one game at a time, uh, one pitch at a time. But truly, that's that's what helped us, um, you know, come out on top. I think in in my mind, maybe in our minds, just not making it more than it is. It's just one more se- one more seven game set against Arizona. And you know, I've been lucky enough to be to be able to attend some baseball playoff games and and a World Series. And and the World Series is different, right? You mentioned the media, right? Like. Were, did you do that? Were you expecting that? You know, it, it is a much, it, it sounds obvious, but it's a much bigger event, right? There's just a lot more people. There's a lot more demands on your time as well. Um, you obviously handled it beautifully because you, you know, you won the World Series, but were, was that, uh, did that throw off your routines at all? Or did it sort of change how you had to do anything? It, you, there's a lot more that was asked of you during the World Series than is asked of you during really any other any other time of the year. Right. Yeah. I mean, to say no would probably be a lie too. Like you, you definitely have to do a little bit um, different routines. I mean, your day to day stuff is pretty much the same. You just have more media availability stuff that you have to attend to, which, you know, that's a distraction when it's outside of um, the collective team unit, you know, moving forward. I mean, but everyone's getting pulled in that direction. It's not just one or two guys. It's, everybody because everyone is there media wise um and i think that's why maybe on the road you know we weren't seen as the favorite in most of our series and on the road 
the media accessibility is not as much as I guess at home. I guess the narratives when you're at home, um, media is more with you trying to get all that kind of stuff wrapped up. So for us, you know, on the road, we're, we were big on playing card games. That was, that was our big thing. That was our big claim to fame this year. And, um, when you're on the road, you just have a little bit more time to do that, um, to shut your brain off from all the stuff out there on the field and just be in the clubhouse with the boys playing cards. And I think that's what led to our road success. And people have been asking me and that's all I can point my finger to, but as each as you move on to each new series, it's like the media kind of gets doubled and then it's mm. more and then it's more. Every series just kind of adds a little bit more. And, you know, you get to see Derek Jeter and A-Rod and Ortiz and all these guys, Pedro Martinez, you know, all these guys walking around, guys that you looked up to and watched when you were a kid, standing out there commentating games yeah. over there on the side of the field and all that kind of stuff. It's real easy to get stuck in that. And, uh, you know, we just did a really good job of – being like, yeah, you know, that's cool. Um, but our job is to go take care of these next nine innings. So I, I'm curious how, so you personally, you know, you hit over 300 in the postseason. In the World Series, you hit 350. You made all the defensive plays. You know, you contributed everywhere. I'm curious how you judge your performance in the World Series. To me, as an outsider, I sort of looked at how you and the team played. And I, I, I felt like, and, I, you know, I'm not a, an expert on the Texas Rangers, okay? But it, I felt like when watching that World Series that it's almost like everybody had their role, right? And not only had their role, but executed to their role. And forgive me if, 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 I'm, if I'm off base here, no pun intended, but I felt like your role was to make all the plays on defense and to get on base. And you did that. Do you feel that your performance was what you wanted from that World Series? Because hitting 350 in a World Series, there's not a whole lot of guys who have who have done something like that. I'm curious how you rate your performance in the World Series. I mean, yeah, that's that's literally my job. Um, you know, hitting down an A spot, turn the lineup over, get it back to our dudes at the top. If I'm on base, you know, that gives them opportunities to drive in runs and then defensively take away any hit that I can. Um get a glove on it, do the best I can out there. And um, fortunate enough, I was able to make some some nice plays. I was oh, yeah. able to put some bats together to be on base for the guys at the top. But, yeah, you know, you mentioned, like, role players. Everyone had their role on the team. And I think what made our team so special and so different is that everybody accepted their role and did the best to their ability in their role, um, especially through the postseason. That's what – you know, Jankowski hadn't played much in a long time. Adoles goes down, and he steps right in there like he hadn't skipped a beat. And and that takes a special person um, in itself. But it just shows to the team aspect that we were able to put together, um, like the narrative of, of Austin Hedges in the World Series or the whole postseason run. Like, he understood his role, and he did it to the best of his ability. Um and it was literally just cheering on everybody. We want everyone to be successful. Um, we're not getting just all that kind of stuff. You know, you, you see it, guys can get bitter or whatever. And it was literally just, hey, whatever helps the team win today, I'm going to do exactly what I need to do to help the team win. If I'm on the bench, I'm going to be the biggest cheerleader, just stuff like that. And um, I mean, everyone executed, I guess, perfectly because we won the World Series. And again, similar question I asked you about the, the, the ALCS. Other than the moment of winning the World Series, is there a moment, an at-bat, a play you made in the field? Is there something that really stands out to you for whatever reason? Maybe it was a turning point in the series. Maybe it was a moment for you. Maybe you, you know, I'm, I'm curious, is there one or two moments that really stand out to you from that World Series this year? Uh, game one, Corey's homer in the ninth to tie it. Um, and then followed up by Adolis' um, game-winning homer, I'd say. Um, I'm going to put those into one category. That that was kind of the, okay, the Rangers are back in it. Because the Diamondbacks pretty much led for seven and a half innings of that game. Uh, I think we scored in the bottom of the first, and then they answered right back and came right back at us. And they led the whole game. Um, I think Corey steps up, hits the big two-run homer. Again, shows that excitement that enthusiasm that he doesn't show very often and then adolis i think um 
was that the tenth, maybe? I think so. Or the eleventh. One of those. One of those innings hits the walk off to lead off the inning, and it's just like, well, here we go. <laughs> um, snap that losing streak at home. That was a big one. Um, but yeah, it just showed us like, hey, we can do this. And those two guys who had carried us, you know, for most of the year, um, and most of the postseason, they're doing it again. Um, another moment, I'm just going to say Nathan Evaldi on the mound in, what was that, <laughs> game five. Um, <laughs> that gallon was perfect through five. He no-hit us through six. Uh, and it felt like Evaldi outpitched him. It's amazing. Which is incredible to think about because Gallon is literally perfect. Right. <laughs> Evaldi's got runners in scoring position every single inning, and it felt like Evaldi was out pitching Gallon. And I don't know if that was just from our perspective because he was getting us out of those jams and shutting them down or what, but that's kind of what it felt like. Um, you know, he was pulling rabbits out of the hat, I think is what one of the things he said to just keep getting out of those situations because at any moment there, they could have broke through. And and once you break through once, like the train does not stop. It just keeps going. Um, so it was just incredible. What an incredible performance he put on. And then Spores, I think, that might have been his longest outing of the year. Mm. I think he went two plus maybe. And, and uh, I mean, his whole postseason was incredible. Same with Leclerc. His postseason was incredible too, but... I'm going to have to say that second moment is definitely Evaldi um, and his performance in game five. I'm sure, I'm sure over the course of your life, you have imagined what it would be like to win a World Series in the moment and to be part of the celebration on the field. Was the actual moment equal to, I mean, was it what you expected or or how different or similar was actually winning the world series to what you had been dreaming about for probably much of your baseball career. I mean, yeah, you put those, those moments and, and those visions, I guess on a pedestal is going to be one of the happiest times of your life. And it lived up to it. I nice. mean, popping that champagne, um, having that time with your boys, being on that stage um, when they hand you the trophy. I mean, it's just, all, all joyful experiences. Everyone's just smiling from ear to ear. It's so happy. Um, you get to see, you know, your whole staff's happy too. Like, um, we were just in the trenches with these guys for the last nine months. And, you know, we were able to come out on top and win the last game. And one team does that every year. Just one. And, you know, it's the first time our organization won the World Series. Um, had some heartbreaks in 10 and 11. And it's just like... Holy cow. Um, this is the pinnacle of our career so far. Um, and, you know, Seager's done it twice now, but um, it's just, you can't really put it into words. It's so special. It's so fun. Um, the celebrating was awesome. The parade was amazing. Um, all those moments combined, though, it's just truly incredible. I don't think there's a way to really answer this question quantitatively. But again, you're a Texas guy. You lived there your whole life. You went to high school there. You went to college there. The Texas Rangers have been a franchise since the early 70s. Did you feel that weight of no World Series championship at all? And then when you did it, did you almost feel that collective community fan base weight come off the shoulders? Because... You know, as a fan of a franchise that, you know, my entire life had never won a championship when, when they finally did, it's almost a surreal feeling because you, you're you're like, I don't even know how to, to, to react. I, I've never <laughs> my team's never won a championship before. Did you feel that weight of the of the of the, the fans um, both before and then a after you won that World Series? Sorry, my brother's sneaking around trying to grab peanuts or something. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yes, you do. You f you feel all the weight kind of off your shoulders. And it's not like you were carrying the weight of the franchise on them, right. but you just collectively feel that, oh, we finally did it. Mm -hmm. um, and to see our owners, how happy they were. Mm. Uh, I think last year we celebrated our, we had the retro uniforms. We were celebrating our 50 years of existence. And um, that's, a, that's a long drought without a World Series title. 
and you know everyone was just like oh we did it but i think it gives us that sense too like hey we've been there uh we know what to expect um so going into these next couple seasons like we all have that mentality of like hey we know what it takes to get there we know what it's like being there we know what this feeling is like let's do everything we can possible to repeat it so I, I got a few more things I want to ask. I won't keep you that much longer, but I did want to talk a little bit about the 2023 season. First thing I want to ask you about. So I, as I said, we're sort of going backwards. I want to go back to uh, the middle of the season and your appearance at the All-Star Game in Seattle. You were the top vote getter in the American League for third base. Um, Texas, obviously playing in the Dallas metro area, that's a huge market. But in a lot of ways, um, I don't think Texas is as a baseball market is as big as obviously New York, Los Angeles, Boston, Chicago, St. Louis. How did that feel? And I hate when people ask, how did it feel? What was going through your mind when you hit that home run? You're like, I'm trying to hit a home run. What do you think is going through my mind? But I, I'm curious what your... You know, as you sort of were, I'm sure you were watching the votes, right? Like, did you did you think you were going to actually wind up being the 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 leader in in votes? And then when you got to the All Star Game, did you feel like, yes, I belong here, or were you like, wow, I'm I'm really really shocked this has happened? You know, I mean, I'm just sort of curious what what your how you dealt with that and and, and how you approached that that being the top vote getter in the all-star game, being a starter in the all-star game and being surrounded by all the best players in baseball. Uh, again, being a fan of the game, it was like, wow, I'm actually here. Um, my locker is three over from Otani. What the heck's going on right now? But, um, <laughs> but as all of that kind of winded down, it was like, wow, this might actually happen because it was me and Chapman were the two up for yep. starting at third base and, I mean, he's got a whole country kind of behind him, <laughs> Texas. So, you know, I it was awesome to get the recognition. I did not expect to be the top vote getter. As it was winding down, I think I saw a special maybe two days before the final vote was up, and I was winning, and I was like, what the heck? How'd that happen? <laughs> um, so it was pretty cool. And, yeah, rolling up to the All-Star game, I think we had, what, five, six guys? Uh, yeah, something like that in the game, and it was just like, wow we're all here together. This is super special. Um, it does take a second for you to feel like, Hey, I do belong here. Mm. Kind of going throughout the day. It's just like, man, I'm, I'm here. You're a fan of it. Again, all the media stuff. Um, but yeah, you're literally surrounded by the best players in the American league and you're looking around and a lot of them have a couple notches on their belt. And, you know, this is my first and it was like, wow, this is incredible. Um, but yeah, literally see, walking in and Otani sitting right there and they're just like, holy cow. Um, there's the best player in baseball sitting right there, just, you know, hanging out, doing exactly what everybody else does. He puts his pants on the exact same way I do, which, is, you know, sometimes you forget that stuff, but, um, yeah, it, it did take me some time, but it did feel like I belonged. And then we, you know, we were only there for about 48 hours and it was just a great, a great time. Got glad I got to cherish it with a bunch of my teammates. That's what made it, I think, even more special, um, having all of us there together and we're able to do some stuff together. And it was just uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, that, you know, I was, I was going to ask you that because I've been, again, lucky enough to go to a few All-Star games as a fan. And it is a whirlwind, right? Like from the minute you get into town until the minute you're out, like there's just there's an event you have to go to. There's this, there's the, the Futures game, there's the Home Run Derby, there's the All-Star game. Like, it sounds like you did you did get at least a few minutes to sort of be able to take in like this is amazing. It sounds like you had at least a couple of those moments. Yeah, especially the home run derby day, like we get in not early, we get in at a decent time and you know, we do all our media stuff, knock all that out. Then we have like a BP practice type thing and then, you know, they gotta get ready for the home run derby and you're just kinda hanging out and you get to actually have conversations with these guys, you know, pick their brains a little bit. Um just kind of get to know them a little bit more. Um, so that that part of it's all cool. But during the Homer and Derby, it was actually cool to be able to sit there. You know, Adoles was in it for us, just being able to watch him go out there and try to put on a show um, and to see all the other guys and kind of admire, like they're going out there with, I don't know how many people are in that stadium, 
for the home run derby. Just Packed. screaming, great time. Balls are flying all over the place. It was um, truly special. But you just sit there and you're like, wow. Uh, last year I was sitting at home watching this on TV, and now I'm literally front row seat sitting right outside the dugout in these little <laughs> couches, chair things, and watching these guys put on a show. I mean, it's all full circle. It's really cool. Um, and just super appreciative of the moment and being able to be in that moment. All right. Last uh, question. Um Although it's going to be a, a bit of a long-winded one, I apologize. So 2022, you come up to the to the Rangers in September. It's a tough year for the Rangers. And you had you were very productive in the in the minor leagues, very productive in the minor leagues, but you also had some tough injuries that you had to overcome in the minor leagues. You're able to hit a home run in your first major league at bat. An incredible accomplishment. Um but that Rangers team, it lost 94 games. Over the offseason, you make a bunch of big signings. You sign, you know, Jacob deGrom. You sign um, several other, you know, key players. And then you walk into spring training, a completely transformed team and a new manager, a, a, a Hall of Fame manager and Bruce Bochy, you know, several future Hall of Famers in – you know, in, in your pitching rotation and in the lineup, and you are still technically a rookie. How do you navigate that situation? Um, and, and how did Bruce Bochy, how did you work with him to sort of understand what he expected from you and, and, and how he expected you to, to work with that, that team together that had to be a really extraordinary circumstance. Um, yeah. I mean, you go back the off season before and we signed Simeon and Seeger right. for a ton of money. Um, but you know, those signings show your organization's commitment to winning. That's what I kind of say about it. Like our owners want to win more than anything. And they've done a great job getting really talented players here um, and locking them up for a long time. So that's step one, you know, see why I had done out, gone out and done some amazing things. You know, JD, the guy, bef the GM before him had done some great things and you kind of saw the trending of our organization in the positive direction. The results hadn't, didn't really come at, at just yet in 22. Um, you're going to go through some growing pains. That just, you know, how it is um, when you have turnover and new stuff and all that. But then Bochi comes into spring training and it was, his message of as one, we do everything as one, the collective unit. Um, and he gave a speech and right when spring training started and, and the message was as one, like that was our thing all year, just as one. And for one, I was getting goosebumps in that meeting. Um, just, you know, hearing your manager, hall of fame manager, he's been there, he's done that. He's taken three different organizations and out of the world series. He's won three titles, like all the accomplishments, He's got all the respect in the game that he has. And, you know, that's how he starts spring training. And he's in it with you. He's in the trenches with you. Um, but the moment that really stuck out to me with Bochi, we're standing around the, the turtle hitting BP one day, just hanging out. And he goes, you know, Josh, your bat's not going to be there every day. I just want you to pick it to the best of your ability. I was like, okay, I can do that. Basically, bring your glove every day. Your bat's not going to be there. That's baseball. Like, you make adjustments. The pitchers are going to make adjustments. The pitchers are really good in this league. <laughs> That's just how it is. Um, so there's going to be ups and downs with your bat. And he was just like, just play the best defense you can. And that's what really resonated with me. And that's kind of where me and Bochy's relationship kind of started. It was literally just be the best defender you can, and your offense will take care of itself. And... I think that'll probably stick with me for my entire career because I'd never heard it like that. You you always hear stuff like, you know, if you can hit, they find you a place to play. But he was literally like, hey, play defense. I know your bat's going to work. Just play defense. Um, and then he gave me all the confidence in the world. I mean, for pretty much the entire regular season, other than a couple of games, I hit in the five hole pretty much all year. Um, and, I mean, when he throws you out there, when you're over 20 with 18 Ks, you know, that can be a, a pretty low moment. 
and that all happens within like five days too. Like it's not anything super long and he just keeps throwing you in there. It shows you all the confidence in the world that he has in you as a person and a player just to get through it and keep going. And um, can't be more appreciative um, of Boach. That's awesome. Well, I could, I could keep you for a lot longer and keep asking you, but I want to be respectful of your time. Josh Young, World Series champion, American League All-Star starter, uh, two-time Rookie of the Month award winner, so many accolades. I am just thrilled that you were able to take the time to talk to to me and the Out of the Park Baseball community. Congratulations on your tremendous success. Best wishes for the future. Enjoy your off season. You've earned it. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. And thank you, everybody, for listening. We appreciate it very much. Um, Cheers to everybody, and we'll talk to you again real soon.